Eurovision fam, it's Alicia Michelle, and I am here in Tel Aviv, Israel. We just saw all the rehearsals, the second rehearsals, for the Big Five plus Israel. Let's talk about it. Hey. Hey. What, 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 what? Eurovision 2019. I got a new video. I got a new video. So, of course, today we kicked it off with the hometown champ, Kobe Marini, Israel. Look. This is a bit of a divisive song this year. You know, some people either really like it, some people don't. I've even talked to some local Tel Aviv folks who are kind of like, uh, I don't know if I really like that song. But you know what? Kobe's on stage delivering. Kobe's doing what every hometown champ should be doing. Kobe is really utilizing the stage unlike any other act this year. If you kind of were on the fence about uh, the song, I think you might be won over a little bit. And that's what you want to do when you have a divisive entry. We have an entry where people are kind of like, I don't know how I feel about this. You want to try and have staging that's going to be impactful. You want to have staging that's really thoughtful, clean, and you want to try and win over some folks. And I think the best way of doing that is by actually telling the story of the song, really, really being thoughtful. And I think the word that I would use for Israel truly is restraint. Now, we do have a little bit of an extra moment happening because, I mean, look, it wouldn't be an Israeli entry without something a little bit extra happening. So he does have like this light up bow tie, but I actually don't hate it. I think it works because at the end of the day, this is a show and we need to have something that's going to feel like a show. You need to be coming on stage with costuming that's gonna look like you're actually performing. We want that, that's what we need. I mean, you're putting on a show. Israel is incorporating elements from their music video, which I think is really thoughtful and I think it actually makes sense. I actually said, um, I don't know if I said this in one of my live streams or I've just been thinking it in my head and maybe I haven't shared it with you, but I would love to see Israel actually open up the grand final, I think kind of have this stirring, you know, I'm coming home, hometown champ just kicking off the show actually makes a lot of sense. And I think that this is a song that will be a great introduction. There's a moment in the song where he sings, you know, I am someone, and I really, really do believe him. I think, again, if anyone was kind of feeling on the fence about this song, if they were kind of like, ah, oh, like I wasn't really expecting this, because of course it's a little bit different than Toy, but look, we shouldn't be faulting people for doing something a little bit different that makes sense from year to year. Mix it up, and you're the hometown champ, so like, you have the ability to do that, you know? You know, this year we have a lot of backing vocalists that I think are kind of taking center stage a little bit, and Kobe's entry has that, and I really, really love the backing vocalist he has. I love the styling for the backing vocalist, and they really do sound like choral, because in the studio track, we sort of have this choral feel with Kobe's voice, and I think that that's recreated in a very thoughtful, nice way with the backing vocalists they have. So, like, kudos to the backing vocalists, but you know, at the end of the day, it's still all about Kobe. It's still all about him, and I think that's really important, especially as the hometown champ, to be doing that. Next up is France, and I'm telling you, you guys know, you know, when it came to France, I was a little bit on the fence. I did like the song. It did eventually grow on me. Of course, I was looking for a little bit more vocal because, I mean, we kind of have a song that's a little bit like a power ballad. And if we have a little bit of a power ballad, I don't think that there's anything wrong with just wanting a little bit more vocal. Look. Bilal is giving us more vocal. I don't know if he's been watching my videos or you've just been like sending my videos to him or something like that. Or maybe we just all have collectively been asking for more vocal, but we're getting it. The way that France has decided to tell this story on stage is masterful. And I said it on Twitter, I'll say it again. This has the potential to win. I know a lot of you were like, how could it win? How could it win? Well, um, spoiler alert, you guys haven't seen all the things that I've seen, some of you. You really haven't seen all of the rehearsals. You haven't seen the entire performance. And when I tell you that there are several moments in this performance that are tweetable, um, gifable. I mean, there are just moments in this song where we truly are telling the story of the song. Uh, like, France is really doing it, and to be honest, look, y'all know that I love France at the Eurovision Song Contest, so I have been kind of waiting for France to have an entry uh, to let us have this moment of, okay, wait, maybe I might end up going to France for Eurovision. Um, I'm gonna say it now, France could win. France could definitely win. What they're giving us is just quality. The goal is to kind of create an impactful moment. And this is really an impactful song. And I think it is a song that obviously Bilal has a personal connection to. 
and we're really telling that story. We, I, I can't say it enough. We're truly telling that story on stage, and it's so important. You know, I, I say that I think that this song has winner potential, but I'm also aware that, you know, there does seem to be this slight aversion to hip hop in the Eurovision community, and there are some definite hip hop elements and moments in this performance. And I'm kind of wondering to myself, I'm like, oh, like, is that gonna deter some people from voting for it? And it might, and I think it's a fair note uh, just to recognize that. So even though I say that this has a winner potential because I think they really, really are making an impact on stage, uh, they're kind of bringing out those hip hop elements of the song more with the revamp. You know, we're getting that like down beat in it. And I wonder if that might be divisive to some folks at home who are just a little bit like, oh, I don't really like hip hop, you know, whatever. Mm -mm. Now, this is me being picky. Bilal is currently rocking a really long wig and I have to say, I just think that he's wearing it just to wear a long wig, not because it really makes a lot of sense or anything like that. It's not like telling a story. And I do think the short wig actually worked out a little bit better. And I say that the short wig worked out a little bit better because it wasn't as distracting. And there's a lot happening on stage. There's also a lot happening with the LEDs. And I think having like the long blonde hair is just a little bit like, okay, you just want to have a long wig. Of course, this is me nitpicking. It doesn't really matter. But I did prefer the short blonde wig um, to this long wig that he's rocking. But again, I'm being picky because look, I said it, I'll say it again. Um, winner potential. So of course Spain had their second rehearsal today and their second rehearsal was pretty good. They largely kept things the same. Look, I think that Spain already has a pretty tight package. I think that the song is really fun. It's really good. It does still feel like there's a party happening on stage. We do still have the puppet happening on stage, which I think will be uh, distracting to some people at home. And I think for a casual viewer, they might be like, why is this puppet here? Uh, but. All in all, I think Spain should be proud of the package that they're sending. Like, no, I don't think that necessarily what Spain is doing this year is a winning package. I mean, Mickey might have a winning package, though. <laughs> No, but I do think that what Spain is doing is, it's good, it's still a party. Mickey looks great on stage, Mickey feels confident. Uh, he looks confident, he sounds confident. I love the dancers. And again, we're still getting that party on stage and that's really important because that's what we want. We wanna see a party, this is what this song is about and we are getting that. Let's talk about Italy because after the first rehearsal, I think a lot of people were sort of confused about Italy and, uh, and I think folks, because there was so much hype around it and so many people love the song, maybe folks are just being slightly critical of the entry and slightly critical of the staging you know that I pretty much said they weren't doing anything on stage that was going to take away from the fact that this is one of the top songs this year and trust me when you see the full performance you're not gonna look at it and be like oh all of a sudden I don't like this song anymore there was something about the rehearsal today though that seemed a little bit tighter it seemed like the dancers were slightly more connected um, to what was happening in the background. I actually like the addition of the dancers. I like the fact that we aren't leaving Mahmoud on, on stage by himself. I, 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 I don't hate that and I think some people were like, oh, we should have just kept it focused on him. But I'm like, I think they're doing something different. I think they're taking a little bit of a risk when it comes to telling the story of this song on stage. Look, this is still one of the top songs this year. Italy still has a very, very good chance of winning. This is just what it is. This is a fact. Don't worry if you were an Italy fan. I'm telling you, you won't all of a sudden not be an Italy fan when you see the performance on stage because it's really good. It's still really good. And Mahmoud is actually adding some uh, some riffs and some vocal dynamics to the song that are only mm, adding to it and adding to that impact. Italy is still a favorite of mine and it should definitely be a favorite of yours. Let's talk about the United Kingdom. The staging is great. Michael Rice sounds great. I think a lot of people are underrating this song for some odd reason. I don't know why. I know some people say, oh, it just feels basic. There is nothing basic about this song when you see it all on stage. When I tell you that there are several moments on the stage, several moments on the stage where you see Michael Rice just owning it. We have, um, there's a moment when the background singers appear. There is a moment right when we go um, from from the first verse and chorus into the second verse where we just kind of blast off and take out into outer space. There is a moment where uh, Michael Rice sort of meets up with the backing vocalist and they sort of form this circle and it just looks so cool. It also sounds amazing. I'm telling you, I just don't see how people at home are not going to connect with this entry because there is just a rawness about his voice. I mean, it's a Sunday here in Tel Aviv. I am not in the United States, but I definitely got to go to church today. Thank you 
Michael Rice. All right, let's talk about Germany. Y'all know that Germany's song actually grew on me. It really did when I first heard it. I was a little bit like, huh, I don't really quite know how to feel about it because I didn't hate it at first listen. I just sort of felt like, okay, what's going on here? What's happening? And I just, it took me a little longer of a time to get into it. And then they sort of won me over and they really won me over because of the harmonies. The harmonies on this song are just so tight. And then that lyrical mastery, you know that's that line in the song. When you said you wanted the world, I said you couldn't do you. Walking right beside me, but I left no room for you. Hey, like there is something about the lyrical mastery in this song where we're getting a song, but then we have these cadences that are just like, dope. Um, I really, really, really uh, enjoy kind of just the composition of this song itself. But let's talk about how it's translating to the stage. First of all, Carlotta's outfit, we need to throw the whole outfit away. Let's just throw it away because it looks like she's going to the club and not stepping on the Eurovision Song Contest stage. And I need to look like she's stepping on the Eurovision Song Contest stage. It's so crucial, it's so important. I'm also not really seeing how her styling is connecting uh, to her partner's styling. I need them to look a little bit more like a unit. We need them to be a little bit more in tune uh, visually with each other and we're just not getting that. And that doesn't mean like, oh, well, it's because they're not sisters and blah, blah, blah. No, 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 you can still have like a coordinating outfit, you know what I'm saying? Like I just need some coordination with the clothes and the styling and I'm just not getting it. All I'm getting are these leather tight pants and I'm like, girl, you can wear those in Euro Club, but I'm not trying to have you wear it on the Eurovision Song Contest stage, you know what I'm saying? I also have to note that Carletta was a little bit, um, or Carlotta, was a little bit pitchy today. She was a little bit pitchy today. I don't think she'll be pitchy on the night, but we need to tighten that up. We need to make sure her in-ears are on so she can hear, because this is like one thing that blows my mind. Like when people are singing, people are like, oh, I had no clue that I was off key. How? Because I'm talking right now and I can hear myself. And I just don't know how anyone else can hear the fact that like they're off key. Like there is no music that it will be loud enough for me to not hear like myself when I open my mouth. Like my mouth is right here. I can't hear myself. I, 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 like I just don't know. I just think it's an excuse when people are like, oh, it's because I didn't hear myself. That's why I was off key. Like, okay. <laughs> I think with Germany's song in conclusion, I don't know if this song will connect with the masses. And they did switch up the staging before the staging included some word projections like sorry and respect. And honestly, the word projections were just a little heavy handed. Like one, the song is already in English. So we're kind of following along with what you're saying. Also, it's like, don't tell, like show me, show me. I don't need to be told, like just show, show it to me. And they did have this one moment in the last uh, rehearsal where we had kind of a selfie wall collage of uh, women kind of showing sisterhood, not just um, people in relationships, but you know, kind of women coming together. And I actually didn't hate that, but I will say that in the press center when the wall came up, there were audible groans. Audible groans of, oh, really? Oh my God. So I guess I understand why they dropped that piece. I do wonder if people will then get confused and not understand that this is a song largely about sisterhood, not about like two biological sisters. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to see if that story will be translated now that we've kind of lost the collage that was really driving uh, that message home where it's like, no, we're not singing about sisters. We're singing about womanhood and like sisterhood. I also have to note that I think the Eurovision Song Contest art audience is largely male. And, and you know, maybe this is just something that they're not completely gonna connect to, but myself and the people that I played it for in the States really do connect to the lyrics. I, I, I don't know, but I, I do fear that Germany will end up coming at the bottom of uh, the scoreboard on Saturday evening, unfortunately. Uh, but I will say, in looking at some of the performances from Germany's national selection, I know a lot of folks liked Ali Ryan and whatnot, but like Ali Ryan was pitchy in her performance. She definitely was. I do think Ali Ryan probably would have performed a little bit better here at Eurovision, but I don't think that's necessarily because the song and the performance was so much better, but I think it might have connected more with the audience that we have, perhaps. Uh, but I don't necessarily think that this is a bad song, but I do think we have some execution issues happening with the song, and that's why it's going to end up where it's going to end up on Saturday night. Well, that's my review and reaction to what happened today. What do you think? 
Talk to me in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Talk to me in the comments below. Do you disagree with me? That's totally fine too. Talk to me in the comments below. This is a conversation and you know it. I am so excited for Eurovision 2019. Bye. <laughs>